Hello, um, welcome to Resident Evil 2. This is going to be a let's play of Claire A. If you know the game already, if you don't, I'll explain briefly. This is a, a classic survival horror. Maybe one of the best from 1998, 7, something like that. But this is a, a high definition mod for the GameCube version. Um, there are reasons why they chose that version. I'm not sure what they are right now, but this is a HD version where they've uh, AI upscaled all of the pre-rendered backgrounds, which is cool. And you can actually see right now, uh, if you know what the original looks like, you'll be able to tell already. Uh, they've changed all the font and stuff and made it look uh, a bit more like the, the newer, well, I'll say newer. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of dates me already <laughs> because to me the Resident Evil remake <laughs> is new is the newer Resident Evil but that was 2003 so um, no the cutscenes repeating but the um, the FMVs are unfortunately not in high definition they did um, update the quality a bit but because of some technical like performance thing I've decided not to go with it and it's not that big of a deal anyway so there are two characters, Leon and Claire, and I'm going to play as Claire first. Let's get the game started. Claire's story. I'll play... There's another menu before we start. Original game, on normal. I don't think this version has hard. I'm pretty sure the only console release with hard mode is Dreamcast, but I don't really remember. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure... GameCube version, it's just the PlayStation release. Outskirts of an American suburb called Raccoon City. Da, da, da. It was later revealed that the terrible disaster had been caused by the T virus, a mutagenic toxin created by the international enterprise Umbrella Incorporated for use in bioweapon experiments. The Raccoon City Police Department's Special Stars Unit immediately began investigation of the affair. The case was apparently closed, thanks to the efforts of STARS members Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. But the Umbrella Corporation's experiments were far from finished. Far from finished. Hopefully there are no technical problems with this being a GameCube emulation. Because I've not really played it much. Uh, oh, baby. It is quite interesting how they redid this in the remake, but I don't know. <laughs> I just prefer Finally. the films that this was that the first couple of Resident Evils were inspired by. Sort of, um... Obviously like, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead. Day of the Dead is awesome, by the way. <laughs> the original, not the remake. The remakes of everything, but uh, the original is so good. That kind of, uh... Uh, horror. Of films like Zombie. Hello. And then I guess the original game was kind of kind of inspired by a lot of uh, earlier stuff like Day of the Triffids and things with the like werewolf movies and stuff like that with the weird monsters and stuff. Oh shit. <laughs> That's the, the longest look around. Wait, don't shoot Get down. <gasps> Weird like doubled up voice sound, it's kind of it'll be a lot safer. Where are they running? <laughs> They're just like running across the road. <laughs> Did he lose his car? That's actually funny. I never even thought about that. Like, <laughs> he just like hijacked some other cop's car. Like, what is that? What's going on? I arrived in town, and the whole place 
went Great. insane. The radio's out. Great, my mouth's barely moving. Yeah, first day on the job. Great, huh? Name's Leon Kennedy. Nice to meet you. Mine's Claire. Oh no, I'm just gonna. Oh, fuck, I can feel it already. I'm just gonna talk about how much what this game did that the, the remake didn't do. Because <laughs> the remake was cool in a lot of ways, like the gameplay was awesome, but it really just didn't capture all of the greatness of this. Some of the nuance of it. God. He is not passing his driver's test. You okay? What if he's just like a community officer? He like can't even drive or handle a weapon or anything? That'd be hilarious. <laughs> just just got a bicycle. Get on the back, Claire. That, that guitar music in the background. Dun 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 dun. So cool. I'm okay. Head to the station. I'll meet you there. Leon and his stupid nineties uh Leonardo DiCaprio uh Yeah, so what the awesome thing about this game Ah oh, so good is that there are two characters and you can play as either of them in any order. But when you complete the game as one you load that save as the other character and you play the other side of the story. So they're kind of like four games essentially. And there's a lot of overlap in terms of like, well, objects that you are using in puzzles and stuff. But there are also unique elements for each of those combinations. And uh, that's something that the remake didn't bother doing, <laughs> unfortunately. Left out a lot of the content, but it's so good. Sorry about that. Uh, man, you know, I thought you were one of them. So many wishes of the remake. <laughs> What's going on in this town? Hold on. I ain't got no clue. Darling. Sorry about that, By babe. The time I noticed something was wrong. The entire city was infested with zombies. Look at them tight jeans. And they're almost riding, aren't they? It's like got no ass. Oh, he won't turn around again. Look at the, he's just checking me out the whole time. Jesus Christ. Oh man, we should be looking at the HD nurse as well. Now it's AI upscaled, so there's obviously like the um, uh, slightly painterly sort of look it gets, but it's a huge step up. Actually, I think you can compare them. I don't know if this will work though. It might crash the whole thing. Yeah, there you go. Dude. It's not the best uh, <laughs> screen to look at, but it's uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I don't actually care because you can get the bowgun off that guy, but it's it's not a great weapon. So we'll leave him to his fate. I mean, he was pretty dead anyway, but. <laughs> And actually, moments like that were cool for Resident Evil in particular because the game like has separate rooms and each room is basically like its own level. The other guy's gone back up. And... Oh no, he's waiting for me. Wait, each <laughs> she just kicked his head off fully. But uh Yeah, each room is like its own level, so they're kind of very separate. But then the games did like to mix that up, and I think that was sort of an example of like them bursting through the gate, it's like kind of a it's almost like a surprising element <laughs> in this uh in these tiles. Which was pretty swell. Mm, fuck. 
Oh, so bad. I'm using um, 360 controller, which is not ideal <laughs> because the game was obviously made for the pit. Like, well, actually, yeah, it was made for the PlayStation. So uh, I had a D-pad, and I'm using the uh, joystick, but because the 360 D-pad is just <laughs> so bad, but uh, it does make it a little strange to control. But I'm not pro anyway, so I'm not going to pretend to be. It's actually a, a woman on the floor there. Uh, you can't see the reflection as well. That's that was obviously always the case, but <laughs> it, is, it is quite noticeable in this uh, high resolution. Which is funny actually, because the original game did have working mirrors in a couple of rooms. Which is pretty impressive actually, because you have to like, fuck, you have to render the room like twice. Yes! <laughs> uh, let's just go down here. No Brad for us. There is a dead zombie Brad from the first game. If you don't pick anything up, I think. But, uh... I picked up the ammo. You can also trigger a shot at the front there, but I can't remember how to do that. But yeah, there is a... With the two characters, there is a... There are mechanics in this where a couple of things... It's only, like, literally, like, two things, I think, that where decisions you make in the first game will affect the second game. And I wished God that they made that a priority in the in the remake. <laughs> I wish that they actually well they didn't implement implement that at all, but I wish that they made it part of the design because that's like such a cool element that I need the key card. Of course such a cool element that I wish that they'd designed the whole game around because that's really what the theme of the game is I think it's like these two uh, parallel stories two people's uh, survival stories but instead they ditched it entirely which is a tragedy the only officer left in the building? Marvin Branagh who are you? <gasps> He's not even Blair. sitting against the. I'm looking for my brother Chris. Against the uh, lockers. We lost contact with him over ten days ago. Chris, Jill, Barry. Everyone Look at that high definition ear. We should have listened to them. That is amazing. About two months ago, there was this incident involving these zombie-like. You should play. Resident in Evil One. Outskirts of this city, Chris and the other stars members discovered that Umbrella was behind everything. At the risk of their own lives. Bloody Umbrella. But no one believed them. Are you okay? Don't worry about me. Just look okay to Just me. Rescue the survivors in the other Wait. Rooms. It says Jojo. Take this key card. You should be able to unlock the doors in the hall with On this. that locker. Now go. But just go. Okay. Excuse me. Just hang in there. All right. I'll be back Point you good at me. That is police brutality right there. Threatening to kill a civilian in a time of conflict. Alright, let's, let's unlock the doors with the keycard. What we just acquired. Man, the resolution difference is actually kind of crazy. Yes, use the blue keycard. Also, can we just soak in the, uh, the music? <laughs> it is so good. So atmospheric. 
I have to admit, I did play the remake entirely with the original soundtrack. I don't think I even really... I think I tried playing with the new soundtrack, but it's pretty uh, empty. I won't read all the files. Maybe I should, I don't know. But I won't, because it's quite a lot of reading. Uh, simple. Oh, I have the lockpick, yeah, because I'm clear. But... I don't know. I'll take it, I guess. I don't know. It has been probably a couple of years since I played. So. Ooh. Something crawling behind the window. Damn. Shots like that. You only get it once as well. Super cool. The atmosphere. His head seems to be missing. It seems to have been twisted off. <laughs> Let's put our hands into the hole and pull out some handgun bullets. Which is good that they reward, like, inspection. Damn, look at that HD blood. <laughs> looks so good. Uh, even that moment was just missing in the remake. It's, it's like... I don't know. Wait, what? You're not usually fast straight away. You son of a bitch. I didn't even... It's like a waste even picking up that <laughs> Um, I need the... Let's just use it. Uh, I don't think there's anything in there until I get the lighter. Oh, this music is so good. Sort of melodic, but also... Also, I don't have auto-aim on, so I need to like manually turn around. Which I think is... Way more fun. I just make it a little bit trickier, but... This could be an issue. No, of course it's not. He's dead already. Well, this Chad. Uh, you. It's tank controls, so the controls are relative to the player. So you rotate left and right. And you don't have to be that precise either, like, if you just point in the general direction, it kind of. Snaps to the enemy. Oh, you can point down. You can point down. Up and down as well. So if you've got a shotgun, you can blow their head off if they're close. And you point upwards. Uh, oh, that's the... The Brad Locker. Is there anything here? Yes, there is! Nice. Uh, it's like one of them games where you just have like random memories. But I do get confused sometimes between this and uh, the Resident Evil 3 iteration. Because I actually played Resident Evil 3 first, I think. And uh, it does have a bit of the police station. Time for some pushing. Pushing and pulling. So you just gotta put these uh, statues on the little plates on the floor. Because some fucker decided to move the statues in the wrong place. It's actually a weird-ass puzzle. Wait, oh my god, with the HD, you can read the text. 
The god of sun and the god of moon, their gaze upon me is the only thing that can release something. Red something. I wonder if they like typed that in manually, like, because like the AI upscaler cannot have retrieved <laughs> that information. Surely. Yeah, it's kind of a weird ass, weird ass puzzle, because it's like <laughs> the statues are just in the wrong place forever in order to keep that red jewel in his hand. Come on. Give me the red jewel. Oh. Stars. The stars office. Such cool music as well, it's like... Tension and everything. Alright. It's the diary of Chris Redfield. Should I read these? I don't know. Chris is, let's read this one because it's Chris Redfield. He's from the first game and he's uh, Claire's brother. Uh, August the 8th. I talked to the chief today once again, but he refused to listen to me. I know for a certain that Umbrella conducted T-virus research in that mansion. Anyone infected turns into a zombie. But the entire mansion went up in that explosion along with any incriminating evidence. Since Umbrella employs so many people in town, no one is willing to talk about the incident. Looks like I'm running out of options. August on the 17th, we've been receiving a lot of local reports about strange monsters appearing at random throughout the city. This must be the work of Umbrella. With the help of Jill and Barry, I finally obtained information vital to this case. Umbrella has begun research on the new G-Virus, a variation of the original T-Virus. Haven't they done enough damage already? I like how the shit he didn't mention uh, Rebecca at all. <laughs> what is she doing? Nothing, I guess. Uh, we talked to her over. I've decided to fly to the main Umbrella HQ in Europe. I won't tell my sister about this trip because I'm do doing so could put her in danger. Please forgive me, Claire. <laughs> if only he told her. She wouldn't have had to waste her time coming here. Into a zombie apocalypse. Unicorn medal. That looks snazzy as fuck. Um... Hello. Grenade launcher. Uh, oh yeah, that's, I think that's Resident Evil 3 where the first aid kit, uh, spray in that bag, but there isn't here. I don't know if you search these like a dozen times or something, you end up getting uh, a photo thing to uh, develop. This is just one of the files, but... Federal Police Department, Internal Investigation Report. Invest... Investigation Report. Mr. Chris Redfield, Recruit City Police Department, Stars Division. As per your request, we have conducted our internal investigation and discovered the following information. Regarding the G-Virus, currently under development by Umbrella Inc. So far, it is unconfirmed that the G-Virus even exists. We're continuing with our investigation. Regarding Mr. Brian Irons, Chief of the Police Department. Mr. Irons has allegedly received a large sum of funds and bribes from Umbrella Inc. over the last five years. He, has, he was apparently involved in the cover-up of the Mansion Lab case, along with several other incidents in which Umbrella appears to have direct involvement. Mr. Irons had been arrested under suspicion of rape, Jesus Christ, <laughs> on two separate counts during his years as a university student. That's deep, dark <laughs> backstory. Back I don't remember ever reading that. He underwent a psychiatric evaluation as a result of the charges, but was released due to circumstantial evidence, as well as his phenomenal academic standing and then became chief of the police. As such, extreme caution is advised when dealing with him. Jack Hamilton, Section Chief Internal Investigations, United States Federal, the FBI, I guess. No, Federal Police Department. Oh, okay, not the FBI. I thought that was a fax from Kendo, the gun shop and owner. Maybe that's what you get as Leon, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, 
What did I even pick? Oh, I've got the medallion. Cool. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of a cool moment when the fax comes through, though. It's just like, I like how uh, sort of like life is continuing and they don't really know this, this shit's going down yet. The whole city has gone to hell. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, can't go down. I'll look at what the key is, though. Diamond key. Okay. Because I won't remember. <laughs> I won't remember exactly what the keys are. Whoa! Just managed to avoid that shit. <laughs> That's another like room break as well, where it's they wanna break the rules a bit. Oh, oh shit, I forgot he was there. No you don't. <laughs> Yeah, if you just walk, he won't, uh, he does aggro if you get too close, but he doesn't like run right at you until you start running. Um, the old liquor. So here's the medallion, here, because I know that's where it goes. <laughs> What key is this? Club? No. Heart? Uh, what is that? Check. Spade. Neither of them. Okay. Um. Uh, I don't remember where to go exactly. I think it's. The s I think if it goes back the same way, but. I'll go this way first, just to check. There's a whole load of zombies in here. So... Uh, let's... I don't know if I actually clear them all, but... <laughs> there they go. They get blown in half. That's actually the good thing about this grenade launcher in in two rather than Resident Evil three is that it's. I thought there was one alive. Uh, that it spreads out. So. Oh. Damn. Okay. I don't think this guy grabs you. They might have done if I was closer, but... Ah, oh, come on, dude. This is when it's a bit awkward. <laughs> with the uh, fixed cameras, but... I don't really need to. Care. I've got a lot of ammo. It's, it's normal mode. It's not that difficult. Right? There is ammo on this guy, which is cool. Oh, I don't remember what the uh, password for that is. But there is herbs down here, which very healthy, nutritious source of. Well, health. <laughs> Vitality. Alright, I'm gonna try and guess it, but I'll only try it once. I think it's two, two, four, six. Damn it. <laughs> Down you go. Uh, let's remember what this. 
Heart, okay. Yeah, you get the, you can find the combination in a, in a file. Which I guess is why I have to sort of read them. Oh, actually, I think it was the... I think I know what file it's in as well. <laughs> and it was a room I didn't go in. Oh, it's locked. Okay, well... Let's uh, do the famous Resident Evil backtracking. Oh, it's full already. Okay. You can combine the herbs into... Um, well, I don't know, combined herbs, basically. <laughs> The heels slightly more because each one. Ah, come on. <laughs> there goes his head. Because uh, there's. Uh, green, yellow, orange, red HP, basically. Although technically the value is like an actual number, I think, because. You can heal to be in full, like, fine health, green health, but you're not actually at 100 HP, 100% or whatever. Um, okay, well, we'll have to backtrack. Go back all the way upstairs, I think. Um, I can put these in here. Let's put the grenade launcher in, and uh, I can put the red jewel in. I think. I don't remember. I think so. I think we can get the combination to that lock. You can kind of like skate a little bit. Oh, oh shit, no you can't. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, I used the spade key to get in here. <laughs> I just dumped the health as well. You know what? Maybe it doesn't work the same as the PlayStation version. I don't know. Because I haven't actually played the GameCube one before. What was that patrol report? We can read it, I guess. I guess. Let's read it. Patrol report. Patrol report, September the 20th, 9.30pm. Sergeant Neil Carlson, we received a report of, suspicious, of a suspicious individual skulking around the sewers in the outskirts of Raccoon City. I searched the area and located the individual, but he ran away before I was able to question him. I recovered the following items. A small amount of C4 plastic explosive, an electronic detonator, 9 times 19 parabellum rounds, infrared scope... Interesting. You know what? I wonder if... Um, uh, I don't think I need that. Okay, so this is one thing that this game definitely did better than the sequel. Is it actually makes sense. <laughs> because in this one, you just get to the police station. And then... Later on, we talk to a guy who's like, oh yeah, you want to get out of the city, you should go through the sewers, because that's safe. It'll lead you all the way out of the city. But in the remake, you arrive into the police station, and then your goal is immediately to go out through the back of the station for no reason. Like, there's no indication that it would be safe, <laughs> or anything. It's just like, so you've, immediately you've just got to leave straight away for no reason, and then you accidentally stumble on the sewer. I don't really know why they've even changed that plot point, because it just is a bit weird. Like, but here it's like you just sort of kind of find out that it might be the safest route. But, uh, I was just thinking though, I wonder if that guy with the C4 actually was going to blow it up to stop people leaving? Because <laughs> that would be... I don't know, I never really thought about it before. Well, these are just tiny little background details anyway, but... Uh, Operation report, September the 26th. Raccoon City Police Department was unexpectedly attacked by zombies. <laughs> I would expect zombie attacks to be unexpected. Many have been injured. 
Even more were killed during the attack, but uh, our communications equipment was destroyed and we no longer have contact with the outside. We've decided to carry out an operation with the intent of rescuing any possible survivors, as well as to prevent this disaster from spreading beyond Raccoon City. The details of the operation are as follows. Security of armaments and ammunition. Chief Irons has voiced... Uh, I think this is the document where you find the code. Chief Irons has voiced concern regarding the issue of terrorism due to a series of recent unresolved incidents. On the very day before the zombies attack, he made the decision to relocate all weapons <laughs> uh, to scattered intervals throughout the building as a temporary measure to prevent their possible seizure. Unfortunately, this decision has made it extremely difficult for us to locate all ammunition caches. What a... Uh, you know... Coincidence. It has become our top priority to recover these scattered munitions. To unlock the weapon storage. As stated earlier, it would be extremely difficult to secure all the ammunition. However, a considerable supply still remains in the underground weapon storage. Unfortunately, the person in charge of the card key used to access the weapon storage is missing. And we've been unable to locate the key. One of the breakers... And there's only one key, I guess. I don't know. One of the breakers went down during the battle and the electronic locks are not functioning in certain areas. It has become top priority to restore power in the power room and secure these locks. Uh, September 27th, 1pm. The West Barricade is broken through and another exchange ensued. We sheltered the injured in the confiscation room on the first floor temporarily. Twelve more people were injured in the battle. Recorder, David Ford. Additional report. Three additional people were killed following the sudden appearance of an of an as of yet unknown creature. I guess that's the liquor. This creature is identified by missing patches of skin and razor sharp claws. Or razor like claws. However, its most distinguishing feet characteristics is its lance like tongue. <laughs> Fucking hell. Capable of piercing a human torso in an instant. Their numbers as well as their location remain unknown. We have in tentatively named this creature the Licker and are currently in the process of developing countermeasures to deal with this new threat. It's kind of cool. It's like far more interesting than like <laughs> the umbrella side of it, I guess. Like, <clears> that's <throat> just some guys just named it the Licker. <clears throat> Random police. Oh. Uh, wait, that didn't have the code in. And I need the lighter to set that fire. Damn, okay, well, I don't have the code still. Hmm. Okay, I think uh, there was one report I didn't read, which was the first one that I got. And it might be in that. Because I'm pretty damn sure it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Police memorandum. Yeah, this is it. This letter is just to inform everyone about the recent movement of equipment that's happened during the precinct's rearrangement. The safe with four digit locks has been moved from the star's office on the second floor to the eastern office. It's 2236. Damn it. <laughs> it's 22. I put 2264, right? Something like that. Damn, 2236. Is that not a code? 2264. <laughs> Is that the... Uh, probably isn't. 2236. Um, 2236. Oh yeah, 2246. 22, yeah. I think I can go through this door. I think there's just ammo in the... Shotgun, no, grenade, grenades, I guess, grenade launcher, shells, or whatever. Uh, help me. Uh, sure thing, little girl. Turn around. You fu oh, he's dead already. Damn. Well, he's not dead, but he's undead. There, there he goes. Oh yeah, we can use it. The key is useless. Let's discard it. Because we know, we know it's useless. <laughs> we just sense the key stops giving us a feeling of, of usefulness. Hey, it's Leon. Leon. With his Leonardo hair. Yeah. 
Have you seen a little girl around here? Yeah, you just missed her. Who is she? I don't know. But it's too dangerous for her to stay here alone. Leon, I'll go look for her. You go and find us a way out of here. Of course. But before I forget, here's a radio. That way we can keep in touch if something comes up. You do an amazing job of speaking only in hand gestures, Leon. <laughs> save in Resident Evil. Regular coffee, my favourite. Look at that neck, my god. <laughs> <laughs>